going on? Coach Jared here from Run Free Training. Today we're gonna go through a core routine. We're gonna go through a core routine that I like to use myself. Um, this is a routine that I do on a weekly basis. It's a routine that I've modified quite a bit over the years to really feel like I'm engaging and hitting the areas of the body that are most important and also to get the most bang for your buck. Um, I prescribe all these this same routine to my athletes um, to do on a weekly basis and I think it's super, super important. Core, um, as we mostly, as most of us probably know, is where it's at. It's the foundation. It's what supports the body and allows us to have a strong foundation to handle the impact that running brings. Um, it also is what allows us, our form, to not break down in late stages of the races when we start to get tired. So whether you're looking to be more efficient, whether you're looking to be a faster runner, or heck, if you're just looking to have a better race day photo, you've got to focus on your core to make sure your form stays strong throughout the, the entire um, race or event that you're participating in. Now, the key to the core is getting in as consistently as you possibly can. Here at Run Free, we usually tell our athletes to get in core at least three days a week, um, ideally on your easy days, so you can spend your hard workout days and your lifting days spent doing that, and then your core days can be spent on your easy days. However, I tell my athletes and I tell myself as well, get in what you can when you can. The routine that I'm about to go through with you guys right now takes in its entirety probably 20 to 25 minutes. However, if you don't have always 20 to 25 minutes to do the entire routine, it's better to do a few of the exercises when you can and get it in two to three days a week than try and spend 30, 40 minutes getting in everything only once a week or once every two weeks. So let's run through the core routine. Some of these exercises you guys have probably seen, some of them might be new, but again, these are exercises that over the years have really, really worked well for me. Um, and uh, I wanna share that with you guys. So the first one we're gonna do here is gonna be the ab wheel. Now I will tell you, this is gonna be the only exercise that I do that involves a piece of equipment. So if you don't have the ab wheel, you can totally skip this, but I like to start off with the ab wheel for a couple reasons. One, it's a nice way to just stretch out and open up my core, elongate that core before we start the, the rest of the routine. Plus, I just feel like it's a great way to really engage the muscles that we're about to continue using throughout this exercise routine. So, pretty simple. I like to just start off going um, straight forward and back up. And then I also like to alternate and go to the left and back up, go to the right and back up, and then back to the center. Really focusing on keeping those muscles tight, engaging that core as you come up. I usually do this for about 25 to 30 seconds is usually plenty. And then I'll move on to the next exercise. So the next exercise I like to move to is a series of crunches. Um, when I do these crunches though, I usually do crunches in three different variations. So I'm, I'm gonna start off with legs straight, then I'm gonna move to knees bent, but feet still on the floor. And then I'm gonna move to legs, feet up in the air. I'll do typically 20 to 30 reps of these. Um, early on in the season, usually can't get as many, but as the season goes on and I've gotten used to doing the core routine more, I usually find myself being able to do a little bit more. So you'll start off with legs straight, you're coming up, holding for a second or two, and back down. And again, we're really focusing on not going so fast, but really engaging that core. Up, back down, up, back down, after 20 to 25, or until you get tired, you're then gonna switch. Knees are bent, feet are still on the floor. We're going up, back down, up, back down, tightening the core, focusing on good form. Then you'll switch, move your legs up into the air. Same thing, up, back down, up, back down, up, back down. Now, the order that I'm going through, um, I typically try my best to alternate between um, I'm working different muscles. So for example, I just obviously worked my core on the front part of the abs. Now I wanna try and work on the back. 
So now I'm gonna go to bird dog. And with bird dog, you're just gonna start on all fours and you're always gonna go opposite arm, opposite leg. Right arm's out, left leg is back. Hold for a second or two, switch to the other side. Now when I'm doing this, I'm trying as best as possible. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying my best to keep my leg straight, my arm straight, really reaching out far with both, feeling like I'm extending my arm and leg as much as I possibly can, while also keeping my back straight. We don't want that back leaning from side to side. We wanna keep, almost think about a straight line all the way down with your arm, and also all the way down from your butt all the way down to your, throughout your foot, okay? I'll typically do 15 to 20 reps of this, and then I'll switch to the next. Next, what I'm gonna do is a series of planks. Kind of like the crunches, I like to do three different variations of the plank. So we're gonna do a forward plank, we're gonna do the right side, we're gonna do the left side. Now the key with the planks, what I like to do to make it a little bit harder and to engage the muscles a little bit more is we're gonna lift up our legs just slightly. So the forward plank is gonna look like this. Get in plank position, feel nice and strong, tight, engage that core, and then you're just gonna lift up one leg slightly, back down, lift up the other, back down. I do this for about 30 seconds. And then you're gonna switch and you're gonna move to one side. Doesn't matter which side. You're gonna hold yourself up. Once you feel like you've got yourself stable and in a good position, foot planted nicely on the ground, elbow and arm into the ground. Once you feel balanced and stable, then you're gonna lift your legs slightly up and back. And when I'm doing this, I'm keeping the legs straight I'm trying to go slow and you can even put your hand on your butt as you do this to make sure you're engaging your glutes. Then you would switch to the other side and same thing, just slightly up, let's scoot up a bit more. So up, get a good position, feel nice and stable and then you're just going to lift that leg up and back. Making sure you're engaging that glute. Okay, back down. Next exercise I like to do is um, going from a, uh, a forward plank to a push-up position. Here at Run Free, we don't spend a ton of time doing a lot of upper body lifting. However, that doesn't mean, mean that we want to neglect our upper body. We still wanna obviously keep in mind our arms and shoulders are an important part of running. So I like to do as much as I possibly can within my core routine to still hit arms and shoulders. So what I like to do, I'll go back in the plank position again, and then I'm gonna go from plank position, push myself up with one hand, hold for a second or two, back down, push myself back up with the other hand, back down, and I'll do this for about 20 to 30 seconds. and back down. Next exercise that I like to do is we're gonna move now to, we wanna, we've obviously hit some core again and we've hit arms. Now I like to do hip extensions. So hip extensions are extremely important. So many times as runners, we, we find a tendency for our butts to be sticking out. We wanna get that butt underneath us so we can drive more power up from the knee and up, but we have to have our hips underneath us in order to do so. So we can almost then have a nice slight forward lean instead of leaning back. So with the hip extension here, you're gonna lay down on your back, feet planted on the ground, arms to your side, and then you're gonna push up. And then from here, you wanna take one leg and extend out, hold for a couple seconds, back, down, push up again, Extend that leg, back down, up. Really working on pushing the hip up, getting as straight as you possibly can. I want my back down to my butt to be as straight as possible. Extend the leg, hold for a second or two, back down, 
Switch to the other. Back down. Okay. Next, I like to do is the Superman. Um, we obviously just hit the, a little bit of the back doing bird dog, but I like to hit Superman as well. Um, for me personally, I've had a lot of SI and low back issues in the past. So doing exercises that I know are gonna keep that pain at bay is important to me. So we're gonna lay on the ground, feet out in front of you, legs out in behind you, feet stretched out, and then opposite arm, opposite leg like we did with bird dog. So you're gonna go up, hold for a second, two back down. Up, back down. Up, back down. Up, back down. Um, I also like to add in some push-ups. So push-ups are obviously pretty simple, um, but just doing a series of push-ups afterwards. I usually try to finish with this, but we'll add this in now. Just doing some easy push-ups. 10 to 15 push-ups is fine. Because keep in mind, you're hitting this two to three days a week. Hit the push-ups. All right, so in addition to the core routine where we spend a lot of time focusing on abs, low back, glutes, I also like to make sure we're focusing on doing some balance activities. Balance activities don't take long at all. Um, and it's an easy way I found to just add this into your core routine each week. So what these are gonna do is I literally spend time just taking 30 seconds, start with one foot, put yourself in running power position. What I mean by that is you're in running position, opposite arm, opposite leg, your foot is dorsiflexed, so we want the foot up, not down. You want to be in power position, and you're gonna hold here for 30 seconds, okay? After about 30 seconds, you're gonna switch to the opposite side, and you're gonna hold here for about 30 seconds. Now, after you do this for a few weeks, this will probably start to get easy, which is fine. To make this harder, just start adding a pillow underneath you. You start standing on a pillow, it's gonna make this exercise a whole lot harder. And that is gonna be our balance exercise. All right, y'all, so we've covered the core routine that I do on a weekly basis, and uh, also the same core routine that I prescribe to my athletes to do on a weekly basis. And again, like I said earlier, before we started, it's important to just be consistent with your core. Get it in when you can. If you have five minutes, if you have 10 minutes, get in a few exercises. You've seen these exercises. You've also seen other videos that we have on our Run Free page that have different core exercises. Pick a few. You don't have to do the exact video that I just did. Pick a few exercises that you like that work well for you and get them in two to three days a week on a consistent basis. Now, before we end, um, I also just want to make sure it's important to know that core, when we sit down and spend time doing core, it's also a great opportunity to spend a few minutes doing some prehab work. And what I mean by prehab work is taking care of the body. You know, at Run Free, we talk about the 1%, and that could be getting good sleep, that could be doing exercises that you know are gonna help prevent you from getting injured. Um, and so taking a few extra minutes out of your day to do some self massage, do some foam rolling, do some band exercises, whatever it is you need to do to make sure you stay healthy and can get your adequate training in. So I always like to spend a few minutes at the end of doing a core routine, whether it's a lacrosse ball, massage ball, just spend some time using some, some sort of hard ball to do some self massaging, whether it's rolling out the foot, rolling out tight muscles in my body somewhere. Foam roller can also accomplish that as well. So if you have a foam roller, I think it's important. This is a good time to also get in some activity there. And then again, like if you've got um, an injury you've had in the past, or you know, I have athletes who have dealt with injuries in the past and they've learned certain exercises within their PT routine that involve a TheraBand. A TheraBand is obviously just a stretchable band that you can wrap around, do really, really great hip exercises with. This is another great opportunity to do that. So take care of yourself, enjoy your training, and uh, happy running.